Was it designed? The storage capacity of DNA. Computer users generate enormous amounts of digital data that has to be stored for access as needed. Scientists are hoping to revolutionize current methods for digital storage by imitating a far superior data storage system found in nature, DNA. I'm going to start and just uh, remind people a little bit uh, uh, of what DNA is. DNA is the hard drive, the memory in every cell of every living organism that has the instructions for how to make that cell. Uh, and if you can read that back, you, you have a sequence of, of characters, uh, if you want to think of it like a digital code. You can see on the right is a little representation of what those four molecules are. Uh, in the middle, the famous double helix structure that nature uses to, to store a sequence of them stably in every cell. But if you read out the information that's there, it's just like a ticker tape of letters, each one being one of the four possibilities. And there's three billion of those, and, and that mere three billion letters defines your genome and all the instructions to make a living human or a living ant or yeast or, or any uh, organism you can imagine. It's sort of like this, but it's incredibly small. One thing we realized is that all, all this information we're storing, you know, it's, it's about DNA, but the DNA we're storing information about is a digital storage medium. It's a sequence of, well, not zeros and ones like in your computers and smartphones, but a sequence of a discrete alphabet of four letters. And if we could manipulate the, some DNA, we could put a message in there ourselves and we could use DNA to store it. DNA is a really good way of storing information. It's been used for for, for hundreds of millions of years on, on life on Earth, evolving, has used that as its hard disk drive. Maybe we could use that. So we devised an experiment to see if this was a feasible way of archiving and storing information. He said the actual recording of what he said in an MP3 format um, recorded into our DNA code, written into pieces of DNA. Because we're molecular biologists at heart, uh, a PDF copy of the Watson and Crick uh, paper from 1953 describing the, the helix structure of DNA uh, in living cells. And we encoded those uh, and we had that made into DNA uh, by, by the Agilent Company in California. Uh, and it came in a test tube exactly like that one. It, it wasn't nearly full. In fact, when it arrived on my, and my, I opened the box up and I held it up and I thought something had gone wrong because it was empty. And my more skilled molecular biology friends had to explain to me that that tiny smudge of dry dust sticking to the bottom of the tube was the actual DNA. And it was a tiny, tiny speck. If the whole thing was full, we would have um, a petabyte of information in there. And that's hard to imagine what something the size of your finger with a petabyte of information is. So in other terms, I, I, I've just paced out the size of the stage. And by my calculations, if you laid out CD-ROMs all over the stage, you get about a thousand of them on here. If you did that a thousand deep, so it'd be up to about here somewhere, this whole stage, this deep in CDs, right, that's a petabyte. So you can either have that much information stored in that format or something the size of your finger in DNA. So it's really compact. That's why earlier on I reminded you that DNA is very small. You could get all the information in the whole world encoded in a DNA format in the back of one, and for Americans, in one SUV, and for the English, in the back of one estate car. So, so you don't need many, many data centers all over the world. All that much information, in principle, would fit in one vehicle. We can read DNA sequences back pretty quickly. That's not the problem. We can make lots and lots of copies of them. That's really easy. It's, it's actually better than a photocopier. A photocopier, you have to run it once every time you want to wait one more copy. Copying DNA is really easy, and it works exponentially quickly. You start with one, and you make two copies. From those two, you can make four. And you don't need a different machine for every one of those. It's just one very standard piece of laboratory equipment can very rapidly um, grow exponentially many copies of what you started with. Potentially, this system could store the whole world's digital archive. DNA has thus been dubbed the ultimate hard drive. What do you think? Could the storage capacity of DNA have come about by evolution? Or was it designed?